What if the next frontier for imprisonment wasn't just a maximum security facility somewhere in the remote mountains, but far beyond our Earth, in the vastness of space? Today we are delving into, what if humans made a secret prison in space? We'll explore the utopian society that could necessitate it, the practicality of human versus cryogenic incarceration, and ponder over the eternal debate. Should this high-security fortress in the cosmos be manned by human guards or be completely automated? So what do we mean by a utopian society? In this hypothetical future, we've seen extraordinary advances in science, education and technology that create a positive feedback loop with societal structures. People are more educated, which leads to better decision-making and a stronger social fabric. That, in turn, reduces crime because an educated populace tends to be a more ethical populace. Crime is basically a social construct, right? It emerges in contexts where there are significant disparities in resources, education, or social justice. Address these core issues, and crime rates plummet. Imagine technology so advanced that it could intervene before a crime happens. Not in a creepy, surveillance state way, but more in the vein of identifying societal stresses and neutralizing them. Perhaps emotional and mental well-being could be so well understood that preemptive care becomes the norm. The utopian society of this scenario doesn't just throw money and tech at problems, it's also philosophically and ethically advanced. The value systems, moral codes and even religions have likely evolved to be more inclusive, more forgiving and less dogmatic. This is a society that understands the complexities of human behavior and deals with them in a sophisticated manner. But here's where things get a bit paradoxical. If you've managed to cultivate such a perfectly trust-based society, the very existence of a prison system would disrupt that trust. Even if there is only a minuscule percentage of people who commit crimes, the notion that there is a place where people are forcibly confined could cast a shadow over the utopian dream. So what's the solution? Perhaps the answer lies not on Earth, but beyond it. And that's where the idea of a secret space prison comes in. But more on that later. The utopia hypothesis challenges us to consider how far we are willing to go to achieve a perfect society and what sacrifices, ethical or otherwise, we are prepared to make. It also prompts us to think critically about whether a utopian society is even attainable or whether it's a no place, an ideal that can guide us but never be fully realized. Fascinating, isn't it? But let's not stop there. What happens to those who simply don't fit into this idyllic world? Let's find out. All right, let's dive right in. If we've hypothetically crafted this near-perfect society on Earth, one that has effectively eradicated most forms of crime and social discord, why would we even need a prison? Well, here's where things get particularly interesting. Even in a utopian society, one of the great constants is human variability. Not everyone's neural circuits are wired the same way. And while most may adapt to a system of ethical and social norms, some might not. Think of it like a Gaussian distribution, or what you might recognize as a bell curve. In any large population, there will be outliers, individuals who, for a myriad of reasons, do not conform to societal norms. What do we do with these outliers in a society that is fundamentally based on trust and ethical consistency? Sending them to a conventional prison on Earth could challenge the foundational ideas of the utopia. It introduces an element of coercion and force that is contradictory to the society's principles. The very idea that you could be imprisoned could create an underlying tension, a ripple in the calm waters of the utopian dream. So, why not take the prison out of the equation, or rather, out of Earth's gravitational pull? Welcome to the concept of a space prison. By placing the prison in space, you're removing the physicality of the problem from the Earth, and perhaps symbolically you're also keeping the purity of the utopian dream intact. In this scenario, Earth remains a sanctuary of enlightened human cooperation, while the inevitable outliers are placed far from its surface. Now, you might argue that launching people into space is, well, astronomically expensive. Yes, but in a society that has advanced to this level, it's possible that space travel has also been revolutionized. Maybe it's as routine as catching a flight from New York to London. Or maybe the resource allocation is so efficient that society can easily afford it. And let's talk about oversight. Who watches the watchmen? Especially when the watchmen are light years away, it's a complex ethical and logistical question. Would the space prison be entirely automated? 
Would it be governed by a subset of Earth's laws, or would it have its own set of rules adapted for the unique situation? You see, the idea of a space prison isn't just about the how, but also the why. It's an exploration into the outer reaches of human ethics and governance. How do you balance justice and freedom? How do you reconcile the inevitable imperfections within a nearly perfect society? So you're probably wondering, would these space-bound individuals be kept frozen? Or would they be conscious? And who or what would manage such a prison? Well, let's get into that. Ah, yes, the age-old debate of the science fiction world has now, in our hypothetical scenario, become a pressing ethical and logistical question. Should the inmates of our space prison be awake, living out their sentences, or should they be frozen in a state of cryogenic suspension? It sounds like something out of a dystopian novel, but bear with me here. First, let's tackle the idea of human incarceration. Now, if we're sending humans to live in a prison in space, the cost of sustaining life becomes an important factor. We're talking about life support systems, food, water, and waste management. In the vacuum of space, every ounce of oxygen counts. Then there's the issue of mental health. Imagine being confined not just within walls, but within the limits of a spacecraft, far away from Earth. That's social isolation to an extreme level. Would our society, as advanced as it is, be okay with this form of psychological toll? And what about rebellion? If the prison were to have human guards, there's always the chance of a mutiny. Even automated systems could potentially be overridden. It's a risk factor that can't be completely eradicated so long as the prisoners are conscious and capable of action. Now, let's consider cryogenic incarceration. On the surface, it seems like an ideal solution. Freezing an individual in a state of suspended animation could significantly reduce the resource cost. No need for food, water, or even oxygen in the traditional sense. A fully automated system could monitor the inmates, reducing the need for human oversight. This would also eliminate the risk of rebellion or escape attempts, assuming, of course, that the cryogenic process is foolproof. However, freezing a human for an extended period brings its own set of ethical dilemmas. What if the technology fails and the person never wakes up? Is that ethical? Furthermore, what happens when they are eventually unfrozen? If our society has advanced, will they be able to reintegrate? Or will they be a person out of time, struggling to catch up with the world that has long since moved on without them? It also begs the question of the purpose of incarceration. Is it punitive, rehabilitative, or purely segregative? If it's punitive or rehabilitative, cryogenic freezing might not achieve that goal, as the individual is essentially paused rather than experiencing a sentence. Each option, human versus cryogenic incarceration, has its own set of pros and cons, both logistical and ethical. And this is where the concept of a space prison gets tangled in a web of moral and practical complexities. So now that we've considered why a space prison might be necessary and how it might function, who or what would be in charge of this off-world facility? Let's dig deeper into that. And now we arrive at an important fork in the road. Should this space prison of the future be manned by human guards, or should it be completely automated? It's a question that pulls at the boundaries between human intuition and machine efficiency. This is not just a logistical issue, but also one that touches on ethics, psychology, and even the philosophy of what constitutes justice and humane treatment. Let's begin with human guards. The first advantage is experience. Human guards can make judgment calls based on a wide range of emotional and environmental factors that current technology can't perceive. If a fight breaks out between inmates, or if someone appears to be in distress, a human guard can use intuition and situational awareness to make complex decisions. Plus, the human touch, as it were, might make incarceration a less dehumanizing experience, potentially aiding in the rehabilitation process. However, humans are fallible. They can be biased, they can make mistakes, and they themselves would be isolated from Earth, creating a potential risk for mental health issues. They also require all the life-sustaining resources we discussed earlier, food, water, oxygen, and so on. Plus, in the isolation and potential monotony of space, the temptation for corruption or negligence might increase. So what about complete automation? Imagine a prison overseen by an AI warden and maintained by robotic guards. These machines would not need life support, they wouldn't get tired, bored, or corrupt, and they could potentially manage resources more efficiently. With advances in machine learning, an AI could adapt to the needs of the prison, even predicting conflicts before they happen based on inmate behavior data. Sounds ideal. 
well, not so fast. Automating a prison system takes the human element out of a very human-centric process. Justice. Machines do not have a moral compass, and even the most advanced AI is not conscious and therefore cannot make ethical judgments. There's also the concern about malfunctions or hacking. Imagine a rogue agent taking control of the entire prison system and its robotic guards. The consequences could be disastrous. Another factor to consider is the justice system itself. An automated prison might streamline the sentencing process, possibly making it more rigid and less prone to human error or bias. But is justice that's 100% by the book always the most fair or ethical? In the balance between human and machine, the debate over who should oversee a space prison is as complex as it is fascinating. Each option opens a Pandora's box of logistical challenges and ethical quandaries. So we've explored the idea of a space prison, considered why it might be necessary, how we might keep inmates either awake or frozen, and who might guard this high-tech Alcatraz in the sky. But now let's ask ourselves, could society accept the ethical burden of such a place? Stay tuned for more, and as always, thanks for watching. Thank you.